It's an historic moment for the American South Asian diaspora. Seattle City Council just voted in favor of banning the caste system under the city's anti-discrimination laws. Which is why we consider this as a really big moment because nowhere around the world such an ordinance has been passed outside of India. Big moment for Seattle last month, becoming the first American city to recognize and explicitly ban discrimination based on one's caste. Now, if you're like me and, and you don't know a whole lot about what caste discrimination actually is, don't worry, we will explain in just a moment. But as a starting point, just understand that this movement to ban it has been gradually picking up steam. Several American universities have banned it, and this month, Canada's largest school board in Toronto passed its own motion recognizing caste discrimination as a real thing, causing real harm, becoming the first school board in the country to do so. So, what is caste discrimination? Caste system uh, originated in South Asia thousands of years back. And caste, uh, according to Hindu religious texts and scriptures, all human beings are born from the body of the caste, body of the God or the creator. The head is supposed to be the birthplace of Brahmins are the ones who are supposed to be the custodians of learning and knowledge. The shoulders are the birthplace of the Kshatriyas. The second rank caste is supposed to be the in charge of ruling and also the violence in society, social order and rule. Vaishyas and merchants who are involved in mostly in mercantile work or trade and commerce and feet is associated with shudras with people who are supposed to be agriculture laborers and people who are dealing with the various kinds of artisanal activities or physical labor and in this caste hierarchy untouchables or dalits were born out of the caste system so they have no caste that's the reason why they are assigned all impure occupations or impure uh, activities to perform in society in this context in caste system the higher you're born in the more pure you are the lower you're born the more impure you are it is hard to overstate just how rigid and restrictive this kind of hierarchy can really be it's literally having your lifelong social status defined at birth so it's like caste provides opportunities and also it also closes opportunities for you like that's why it's very important why caste is important because it defines what you are and what kind of education you have access to in if you are in india in villages it also decides whether you have, you have access to clean drinking water whether you can eat what kind of food you can eat so caste defines everything about human life and even in those parts of the world that have banned caste discrimination like india banned it well over half a century ago the idea that people could be ordered and ranked along these archaic and arbitrary lines never really disappeared. It's not hard for a complete stranger to figure out what caste you were born into, and that pride or stigma can be really sticky. People carry caste mostly through their last names. If you're interacting with an Indian person and uh, Indian origin person, and it's very, even if you're Muslim or even if you're Christian, it's very easy to identify their caste through the last name they carry out. Anyone who has any familiarity will understand that, you know, once you tell the name, full name to a person, he knows whether he, I belong to their caste or not. On the basis of that, they draw the boundaries. This push to identify and ban caste discrimination comes largely from the Dalit community, considered the lowest in the Hindu caste system. In India, Dalit are often mistreated, sometimes even physically attacked by higher castes. This is where a 19-year-old, one of two women from the marginalized Dalit community, was gang raped recently, resulting in her death. The marginalized women of the so-called untouchable or Dalit community bear a disproportionate burden and are often subjected to the most extreme acts of cruelty. In April, Shubham was beaten up by his teacher on allegations of theft, which he denies. He says it's a common excuse teachers use to pick on Dalit students. In India, protests are being held over the death of a 15-year-old student allegedly beaten by his teacher. The family says that the boy was beaten by his teacher a few weeks ago for making a spelling error. Now, uh, the family has called this a caste-based hate crime. 
This family is from the lowest caste in the uh, Hindu caste system. Now, in Western countries, the discrimination that lower castes face isn't always so obvious. Hi, my name is Anne Murphy, and I teach at the University of British Columbia in the Department of History. Um, and over the past couple of years, um, I've been working with my co-primary investigator, Dr. Suda Jengbe, um, on a project called Cast in Canada. In this project, um, we're really focusing on the experience of um, Canadians um, of caste discrimination and also of caste-related issues um, for them uh, in the Canadian context, but also reflecting on um, India and as well. So what's really striking about those stories is that um, they take place in, um, these experiences take place in a wide range of contexts, both work contexts, school contexts, and among friends. Um, and what's really striking to me when I listen to these stories is about how kind of um, ubiquitous these experiences are. But it would be more um, kind of interpersonal um, uh, kinds of comments, um, although there are cases of people kind of being verbally aggressive towards um, people who are of lower caste background, so um, quite overt discrimination um, and exclusion. So that does happen too here in the Canadian context. But um, more common would be the kinds of uh, microaggressions or kind of exclusions or senses of us versus them, sometimes assuming that um, uh, a person is high caste when they're not, and then what that means uh, for that person to have to, to say, oh, do I, do I have to you know, tell them that I'm from a lower caste, that they would call me lower caste? It's really, um, it's heartbreaking, it's really, um, to, to hear the kind of um, personal agony that it um, uh, produces in people because not they don't want to betray their identity, who they are, and the experience of their families um, and deny that they're from this community that has been marginalized and discriminated against. But at the same time, you know, they're in personal relationships with people. They might be in high school and someone makes a comment to them um, or in school or at some, a, a very dear friend's house. Coming up, we will hear from one of the people Anne Murphy actually spoke with about their experience as a Dalit Canadian. I, who am a Dalit woman, um, who faced discrimination growing up, who felt like I was very much silenced, who heard the, ra the, the castist slurs, who saw what my parents went through, I don't want the next generation to go through it. I don't want my children to go through it. Hey, welcome back. Before the break, we heard from a researcher who spent the past few years speaking with Dalit Canadians about their experiences. One of the people Anne Murphy's team spoke to was Mira Estrada, a Dalit Canadian who lives in Toronto. My name is Mira Estrada. I am a freelance journalist. Growing up, I actually had a lot of South Asian friends. I still do. Uh, my family was very, very much involved in the temple. I would attend Gujarati language classes weekly. So I was surrounded by the Indian community. And I would actually hear, it was very normal to ask, what what jat are you? Which, which is in Gujarati, what caste are you? And my parents had always, always told me when I was younger, we don't believe in that. We're Hindus. We don't believe in this you know, segregation of caste. We just don't believe in it. I remember when I was 15 years old, my parents were very serious and they said to my brother and I, you need to come downstairs. We need to have a, a serious conversation with you. And that is the first time that they explained to us the caste system and that we were born into the lowest rung of that. Um, at that time, we always just used the words untouchable. My dad said, we are untouchable. No matter what we do, we are going to be seen this way. People would openly talk about it and show very much pride in their caste. And that's when I sort of began to shrink myself because I didn't want to reveal what I knew. I was scared. I didn't know what it meant, what people would think of me. Um, and so really after I knew what it was, I noticed how much it was around me, but I also noticed how much silence there was of people of so-called lower caste. There was no mention of us unless it was something like derogatory jokes, but there was very much a pride in sharing 
your dominant cat. I have a big group of South Asian friends. You know, people are playing matchmaker with each other. There's the aunties at the temple playing matchmaker as well. And people would always just assume because we were so well educated, my father, my mother, my brother, myself, that we must be from a dominant caste. And they would always say, oh, Mira, we have this boy. He's from such a, a good family and a good family, meaning a you know dominant caste family. And I would think to myself, but I'm not a good girl. Um, how will we, how will I ever say this to this to this family that I'm not a good girl? I remember always thinking, I'm not a good girl. I'm not good enough. I ended up actually marrying somebody who's not um, Indian at all. And it's funny because even in marrying somebody that's not Indian, my parents felt they really needed to share with his family what caste we are. And so when the parents, we had the, you know, the get together of meeting each other's families, my dad said um, to my mother-in-law and my uncle, um, he said, you know what, we are, we are untouchables and we're the lowest caste. And I remember my mother-in-law's face and she's like, what is that? I don't, I don't know what caste is. I don't care. I don't know what it is. I don't care about it. And I cannot explain to you the way my heart swelled. And I thought, finally, it was just like the biggest relief came over me that finally, I am not going to be judged for something that I have nothing to do with. For people like Mira, the Toronto District School Board's decision to officially recognize caste discrimination, that's a big step forward. And it could go further still. Within the TDSB's motion is a request of Ontario's Human Rights Commission for feedback, which it hopes could eventually lead to caste being considered a protected category, sort of like gender or race or sexual orientation. There's also a move to incorporate teachings into the curriculum. And that has passed 16 to five. I think we made history. I'm so honored. The trustee sponsored a motion to have Canada's largest school board recognize caste oppression exists in schools and to work with the province's Human Rights Commission on how to deal with incidents. It's happening from students to students. It's happening from teacher to students and teacher to teacher. I, who am a Dalit woman, um, who faced discrimination growing up, who felt like I was very much silenced, who heard the, ra the, the casteist slurs, who saw what my parents went through, I don't want the next generation to go through it. I don't want my children to go through it. I really, and especially in my teen years, I, you know, I felt shame around, I felt fear. I didn't have the words to express myself. And that's why I think having this, having the TDSB recognizing this, if people are going through discrimination, now they have somewhere to report it. They feel there is a safeness in that. And naming it legitimizes it. Because for so often we have been gaslit and by giving it a name, by giving it a voice, we can now finally address these issue situations. But that's not the end of it, because there are some in the South Asian community who believe that these motions hurt more than they heal, even calling them Hindu-phobic. Hello, my name is Ragini Sharma, and I'm the president of Kohi. Uh, Canadian Organization for Hindu Heritage Education. I want to categorically state first that we are completely against any form of caste oppression. The question for us is not whether caste should be addressed, is but how. So our concern with that is that it singles out the South Asian community and the Caribbean community as particularly of concern as, uh, uh, you know, paints them uh, with a broad brush as being bigoted, especially bigoted that they need to be policing. So here in Canada, there's no evidence that there's caste oppression. And I want to say that if there is, I fully support that it should be uh, investigated and it should, uh, should not be happening. Those opposed to these motions often point to the fact that there just isn't a lot of data about caste discrimination in Canada, and that calling it out is sort of like looking for a needle in a haystack while putting an entire community under this lens of scrutiny. But the counter argument goes, how do you get good data if you don't recognize the problem first? 
I think it's important to note that uh, I don't think anyone knows the, how prevalent caste discrimination is in Canada, partially because it's not a protected category and so it's not something that people feel um, enabled to pursue um, as an uh, issue. But we do have a lot of um, anecdotal evidence from people about these experiences and I think that that's consistent with how caste operates in general. The thing is, so many people, so many of us Dalits have, have been fearful to speak out of who we are. I didn't say who I was until I, I was 40 years old. So it's hard to, to gather that information when there are so many people who feel very fearful about speaking. I get messages in my direct messages from young people saying, this is what's happening to me, but I don't want to tell anybody because I'm scared. Emotion has never brought upon so many emails, so many phone calls from both sides opposing and for. And what came shining through is that caste does exist. And just because we don't understand it doesn't mean we ignore it. So what happens next? Well, no one knows for sure. But it seems that the conversation around caste discrimination in this country has only just begun. We'll be right back after this.